Oh, my current position is uh, assistant professor. I mm -hmm. work uh, as an assistant professor in the University of Amsterdam Business School. Mm -hmm. uh, and I study climate change, uh, but in a broader field of sustainability and corporate social responsibility. So my research interest is not only climate change, but it is absolutely the, the focus of my research. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been doing that for well, quite some years now, and uh, well, since it's become one of the topics uh, in the world, I would mm -hmm. even say. Uh, it is a very exciting mm -hmm. topic to work on uh, mm -hmm. right now. Excellent. And your name? Oh, I'm very sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Jonathan Pinkse. All right. Or Jonathan uh, Pinkse, you can't say that uh, in a different way. Thank you. And so what is the principal message that you would like to com convey to companies today uh, relating to climate change? Well, first, uh, what I see is that to explain exactly what certain discussions are around climate change. We talk here about mitigation and adaptation. What does the one mean? What does the other mean? Uh, that people know something about the issue of climate change, but how it is impacting the company and what the two different discussions are is something that is still complicated to many. And as an academic, I feel I can kind of help others understand their own company. Uh, what I saw in some sessions is that uh, I asked for certain things. Uh, are you doing these kind of things? And I said, hey, actually, we are doing these kind of things. We just didn't use the term adaptation to climate change for it, but we do take it into account in our operations. Um, so my role is then to help pe other people in business understand actually what their contribution already is or can be, uh, mm -hmm. because they're not always aware of, of that, because uh, for them, this is one of the many issues they have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And for me, it is the issue I work on, mm -hmm. so I can clarify it a little more. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I can't help them on all the other things they're doing, but that's mm -hmm. not my role. Uh, so could you be uh, give us an example of adaptation as far as your definition is concerned? Well, what adaptation basically is, is that uh, you have the impact of the climate uh, on uh, earth basically uh, uh, and if you have certain operations I talk to people of, a, of an oil company they want to develop uh, oil wells in the Arctic uh, region and they're already starting to think about okay if you build an oil rig uh, it is now uh, uh, there are still now a lot of ice there but what if it uh, it warms up and you have this oil rig in a place where there is no ice uh, is the foundation of the oil rig still good enough to work in such an environment and they said they're already working on that but they just didn't call it adaptation but they are thinking about these scenarios like hey but the surface here might change in the coming years um, so we have to take that into account uh, in building these things because they have to be in operation i don't know for decades maybe and um, so those kind of things you see that there is adaptation uh, from a business uh, point of view Mm -hmm. That's an excellent example. Um, so what do you believe are the greatest challenges or risks for companies in the next 5 to 20 years? Ooh, uh, yeah, in the field of uh, uh, letting go of what you're used to doing. I mean, uh, if you talk about the huge challenge of changing our energy system, which is completely reliant on fossil fuels, letting go of that and dare to invest in alternatives that are, uh, well, uh, uh, produce less carbon or no carbon at all, that is a huge challenge. I mean, everybody, people, companies, uh, feel safer if they can continue doing what they're used to doing, because that's what you're good at, that's how you make money, that's how you create value. But certain things in, in the field of climate change and sustainability uh, ask for a change, uh, and that is, <laughs> That is so very difficult, so I see that as the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. And it's not always not that the technology is not there, it's just also the whole company culture that has to change. Mm -hmm. And when I talk to people at a conference like this, you feel that, especially with the younger people, that they, they want to have certain changes, but implementing certain things are difficult because their seniors do not always see it like that because they've been working in a certain, with a certain way of thinking for the last 25 years. So they can't look at it out of the box to the same extent. That's very understandable. So could you offer then some suggestions for opportunities for companies in the next decades? 
Ooh, that's, uh, it depends really on the type of industry what you talk about. I mean, our research now is focusing on, on the car industries, uh, and there you see the big car companies really put too much focus on their existing types of cars, which are too heavy, use more lightweight materials, think about maybe alternative fuels. Uh, I, I see many tries, but I don't see huge changes going on there. Same with the uh, electricity companies. I mean, in many parts of the world they've just been recently privatized and these companies are figuring out how to become competitive companies. And in doing that, they are not using, in my view, enough uh, of investing in new renewable energy. Um, in my country, the Netherlands, you see that they are very good at marketing green power, but if you actually look at the figures to what extent they also generate uh, renewable energy or new renewable electricity, it, it's not in line with the marketing. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, practice what you preach is then basically uh, the saying. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there are huge opportunities. Um, I've, I understand that many, many technologies are still difficult. I mean, uh, I come from a very small country and we are investing in wind power, but if we fill up our country with windmills, uh, it's not a yeah, uh, it's not a very nice sight. Uh, uh, in few places, yes. So maybe more solar, uh, integrate that in buildings. I think there are huge opportunities there. I just bought a house myself and it's not integrated. So I now, have, if I want to, I have to make huge investment to do that. Well, if the construction company would have taken it from the start and it was part of the deal, I mean, people take out a mortgage and just accept that it's part of the whole price. So then it's not like, I will have to invest uh, 20,000 extra dollars. It's just, this is part of the house. Uh, and those kind of things could really help make a change. Uh, and, and then people are, of course it's new technology, but new technology is also uh, fancy gadgets. People lo love it uh, to have something uh, like that. Uh, so uh, market it in a different way. Make it something that is exciting uh, instead of, have to change or it might not be reliable and things like that. It's um, a so good point. So that's how I see it, it's more behavioral change, but I think companies can lead the way there by facilitate uh, consumers making different choices. Excellent, thank you. So is there a final message you would like to leave us with today regarding climate change and adapting to climate change? Ooh, well, that I think the climate change, adaptation to climate change is, 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 is a completely new discussion which policymakers only recently really talk about. It's known for a longer time that we have to deal with it, but not there haven't been doing that much. And for business it's even further away the next step. And my main message is um, don't just look at adaptation to climate change like, oh, cool, I, okay, I can preserve my own company in this way, but also how it has a broader impact in terms of sustainability. Am I helping local communities now also better deal with uh, changes in the climate? So not that I'm still able to drill oil out of the ground, but also uh, that I facilitate local communities to uh, continue living in certain places, uh, see it as part of a broader agenda of sustainability, which is not only uh, uh, an environmental dimension, also a social dimension, because adaptation is a lot about the social dimension, actually making possible for people uh, to either continue living or uh, be able to, to, to still survive in an environment that is uh, not as friendly as it used to be due to what's extreme weather events, drought, floodings, things like that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem.